Today at Keith Thurman's Open Media Workout, salute to Fred from Barbershop Conversation for getting the footage. I'll link one of the videos in the description. Keith Thurman kind of, you know, let people into his minds of how he thinks as a fighter and shows why, you know, he has a reputation for being a pussy. We back. Good fellow sports TV. We in the building. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, bell icon button. Won't miss another video. And, um, you know, basically, he, he, he was just telling on himself, you know. One line that he said, man, I'm paraphrasing here, said, we young enough that, you know, we still got time, you know. He commended, you know, Crawford for jumping into the division with a splash. He 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 uh, commended Mikey Garcia by jumping into the division with a splash and say that he going to get beat. But, he, you know, you got to commend. He going to get that respect. And if he wins, he's going to create his own legend. It just shows you how Keith Thurman thinks. Keith Thurman approaches boxing, um, you know, at a great intelligence. You know what I'm saying? And uh, real, real smart, real, real strategic. But that ain't what we trying to see. Okay, we trying to see Keith Thurman, you know, be that guy. We trying to see Keith Thurman fight the best. And the media members, you know, and they do what they do. You know, you're going to be out there to cover it, to get the coverage. But they make these dudes feel more important than what they are. You know what I'm saying? By them all there asking them questions and shit. Like, dude, if you really want want to hurt this nigga, make this dude fight the best, man, don't show up to that shit, man. Real talk. I wouldn't show up to that, that shit. I thought about flying out same day. They going out, but I can't support the bullshit, man. Real talk. And like I said before, it ain't a black, it ain't a white, it ain't a green, it ain't a Simpson yellow thing. It's a, it's the simple fact that if you in boxing and you talking boxing, guess what? You got to have a love for the sport, appreciate the history of the sport. And a lot of the media dudes, they don't appreciate the history of the sport. They don't have the sport at their best interest. Everybody want to make a buck. <laughs> That's what it come down to. Everybody want to make a quick buck. You know, nobody, nobody thinks about the sport of boxing and, and making sure the next generation get the sport and it's in good hands. Nobody care about the overall well-being of the sport of boxing no more. Everybody care about their pockets. Everybody care about stroking niggas' egos, egos, and that's what it's about. You know, if you really want to hurt somebody, man, don't show up and support that shit, man. Like I said before with Dribble G, Vonis, Monterosian, I was mad at a lot of brothers that went there. Even Fred, I said, I made a video, said he went there. I was disappointed in him. I was. I was disappointed for people who watched that fight, you know, just in general. Like, why would you even get at the time of day? Like, is your life that pathetic where your life re revolves around boxing? You know what I'm saying? I went to the casino, spent some bread, spent a couple hundred, just chilling, you know, by myself, chilling. <laughs> I'm not, I wasn't going to watch that shit. I wasn't going to just sit at the crib, May 5th, weather nice, Cinco de Mayo, nice Mexican chicks and Latino chicks walking around. And sit there and watch that bullshit. I, I just got to hold myself to a different standard. You know? And everybody need to hold Keith Thurman to a different standard. Then if all these other dudes around you was taking risks, why aren't you taking risks? That should have been a question that should have been asked. And I may have missed it. Excuse my ignorance if I did miss it. But that should have been a question that should have been asked. Like, okay, if they taking all this risk, why, why don't you risk it to be great? John Jones took 18 months off and fought the guy that gave him the toughest fighter's career. Those are the questions that need to be asked about Keith Thurman. What are you going to do? He going to punk you? He going to square up with you? He going to fire on? They ain't going to do that. He going to disrespect? I don't care what nobody say out their mouth. As long as you don't put my your hands on me, you can make me like a stupid the stupid, stupid on camera. I asked a real question. If, if John Jones come back at the 18 month, Caleb Plank can take a year off and take a tough fight, why can't you? If all these dudes around your division is, 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 is taking and making power moves, why can't you make a power move? Why do you have to approach it with great intelligence or in a strategic manner? Why aren't you the same? Nobody going to ask that question, though. Because they're scared you're going to get loud and start barking. Like, a little five, five, six, five, seven dude shouldn't scare you loud, barking? You see what, man? You know, you disrespected me. and Man, fuck you then, dude. I ain't got to show up to this bullshit-ass fight versus Josito Lopez. They're giving tickets at Little Caesars around New York for people to come see. I want the scoop. I want the real truth. You know what I'm saying? You said your shoulder hurt on the Bread and Shop show. You said it was your hand and your elbow. I want them type of questions. If you're going to go out there, ask the tough questions then. You know, and that's no offense to nobody that was in the room, but it's real talk. Only thing I took intriguing out of that whole interview and the other one he talked about depression was that he a bitch. He a pussy. That's the only thing I really took out of it. He's seen everybody around here making power moves. Well, well, you know, they don't depress me, and, and I don't care, man. Why don't you make the power moves? Why don't you want to step up this year after a tune-up and fight a tough competition? 
If everybody around you take a risk, you could then Mikey for taking risks. You could then Terrence for taking risks. Why don't you take a risk? And then in another workout video, I seen him was calling out Danny Garcia and Sean Porter again. Why not call out Errol Spence? Why do we have to ask you to call out Errol Spence? You know? Why do I have to ask you to call out Errol Spence? Why don't even the reporter have to bring it up? Why are you bringing up Danny Garcia? He's so irrelevant. He's so irrelevant. Sean Porter, I understand that's a mandatory. If you call him out, how about fight him next then? But I'm just telling you, just take you into the mind of a pussy, bro. That's just what cuz is when it comes to this boxing shit. I don't care. Oh, no fighter is scared. Yes, they is. They scared. You know? And people call him a champion. He's a title holder. Keith Thurman is not a champion. He's a title holder. Like Arrow and like Terrence and like Sean. They're title holders. So stop bigging this man's head up and calling him a champ. He's a chump. He's a chump. Until you get all the belts, he could be a champion. You know what I'm saying? That's just real fact. That's real stuff, man. Sitting up here, bigging this dude's head up and, there, and up behind closed doors and on niggas' YouTube channels and on their articles. We, we be calling him a pussy. Man, fuck that, man. Keep that same energy. That's what I would. I keep that same energy. Like, no, you you a whole bitch. Like the fan. The fan that pulled up on Keith Thurman earlier this year at the uh Earl Peterson or was it uh Brent no, it was Rios and um and Danny. Dude, man, dude, we get the man last year he got the it was last year, last February. He the GOAT, bro. He pulled up on Keith Thurman and told him exactly how he feel. That the reporter scared to do. He said, But you scared of Errol Spence. You scared of Errol Spence. You a punk. You a poo now. He went in on Keith a little short. Arab or Indian guy, no offense to him, he pulled up on Keith Thurman and told him, like, you a bitch. What can he have to say? It's true. Well, you got to understand, I got to get my elbow together. And then, and then in 2025, 20, we could fight. You know, my man, he had more heart than, than all the reporters did. You know? That man right there had more heart than all the reporters did. Because you already know Keith Thurman, man. Come on. I condemn him for, for stepping up. And I would have I would have came and took a lesser fight. Yeah, because you a bitch. That's why. Keith bitch time Thurman. You know? Slid in some coochie for the first time and married her. Come on, man. Come on, man. Let's talk facts here. Keith Thurman is a clown, bro. A whole clown. And everybody's just bigging him up. I wish I would go pay to see this clown, man. Until he do right, man. I mean every word I say, man. Fuck Keith Thurman, man. He out there talking. He got a synopsis and a point of view on everybody else in the division. Yeah, this guy, that guy. Still calling out Danny and Shine, bro. I don't even know what to say no more, man. Come on. Come on. What are we going to talk about now? We talk more about numbers. Like my homie sub say, Gang CP. We talk about numbers more than actual boxing. Like, what does the numbers really matter? It matters because these dudes are crying about every single penny. He said, we young enough to, we young enough, like, we young enough, bro. We young enough? Really? We young enough. Like, bro, like, nigga, you 30 with under 30 fights. It's time to mash the gas and step it up, but he won't. Like I said, man, there's still people that hang on this nigga nuts, bro. How? How does he still have diehard fans, bro? How? If, if it wasn't for 50 million, if Joshua never got a 50 million offer, Keith Thurman would be the biggest cooter out there, bro. The biggest cootie cat cooter out there. He should send, he talking about Terrence Crawford should send him 5% for making a, for speaking to Amir Khan fight. You should give Anthony Joshua 30% of your next fight because if it was, if if he didn't if he wasn't there, he stepped up and fought Wilder for a fifty million dollar offer. All the bricks will come on you even harder, bro. But y'all know what it is. Good fella sports TV, man. Look for us to go live around nine o'clock tonight or nine thirty Eastern Standard Time. Appreciate everybody for checking in. Don't forget me on Facebook, Twitter. Also you can reach out to me to the email if you got a business question, inquiry, sponsorship. Uh in addition, if you have any video requests, email me. My email in the description. I'm going to do a Q&A on Saturday mornings. We're going to call it something. I come up with a name. And everybody that turned a question or question in. Uh, Monday through Friday, I'll get to the questions Saturday in the video request. All right, thanks. So it's going to be all one video so I can get to everybody's questions at once. It's going to be nice. It's going to be suave. But y'all know what it is. Good Fellow Sports TV. Don't forget you can donate by the donation.